What is going on guys? Welcome back to the advanced Python tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about encapsulation. So let us get right into it. All right, so let's talk about encapsulation and data hiding. The basic idea is we have a class, let's say we have a class person, for example, and this person has a constructor. So an init method here is self and want to pass name, age, gender or something like that. Uh, and what we do here is we say self dot private attributes so two underscores for a private attribute name equals name and then we can copy this and we can change uh, those values here to h private age and private gender. By the way, the names don't have to be the same. But I think you know that already this is an advanced Python uh, Python tutorial series. Uh, this one is actually right. So here we're going to say h and here we're going to say gender. There you go. So this is a basic constructor. And now all those attributes are private, which means that if I say p1 equals person, and I fill up those parameters here. And after that, I want to say p1 underscore underscore name equals something this doesn't work. This is not going to, uh, to work in Python, because those attributes because of the two underscores are set to private. So what we can do here using annotations is we can transform, or actually not transform, we can create properties that allow us to access uh, those values uh, to read those values to write into those values uh, through a property through so called getters and setters. And uh, how do we do that? Essentially, we do something like a function. So we say def name, for example, with a capital N, this is the usual convention. Uh, and we pass a self attribute here. And what we do here is we basically just say return self dot underscore underscore name, we can access underscore underscore name because we're in the class. So it's private, we can access it. Um, now, this in and of itself, of course, would already work. But in order to make this a property in Python, we need to add the annotation called add property like that. This turns this into a property that we can use later on, we're going to see uh, what this actually means. And now what we can do in addition to that, if we want to have a setter, we have to say def name again, and self value. So this is basically the setting function. And here we just say, uh, self dot underscore underscore name equals value like that. And of course, in order to make this an actual setter, we need to say at name dot setter. Now, this is interesting, because in Python, we don't have um, we don't have method overloading. So we cannot specify usually, we cannot specify a method called name with self and then another method called name with self and value. This does not work. This works in C++ and Java and uh, in other languages. But it does not work in Python usually. Uh, and as you saw, if I remove this here, we're going to get uh, hopefully if it actualizes here. Yeah. Um, if it refreshes, I mean, uh, method already defined in line 10. So we cannot actually go ahead and just define the same method with a different signature. But we can do it if uh, we have this annotation of name setter here. Uh, so this is a very basic thing, we can go ahead and create this uh, person element here. So we can say, um, p one equals person, this person is going to be Mike, this person is going to be 20 years old, and we're just going to pass a character M here or a string M for male. And then we can say p one, or actually print p one dot name like that. Um, now we should open up a terminal in split mode. Oh, yeah, I need to specify the argument bash, there you go. So we're going to navigate to the directory that we're currently at. And in here, we're just going to say Python three main dot py. And you can see we get Mike as a result. Now, if we don't have those things here, let me just make this a little bit smaller here. Uh, if we don't have all of those things here, um, this is not going to work, we cannot just say print p one underscore underscore name because it's private. At the same time, we don't want to have it public because what can we do in a setter, we can control stuff, we don't have a direct access to the variable. If I say something like self dot name equals name without making it private, everyone that creates an object can just go ahead and and manipulate the variable without any any control mechanism. So I cannot check for for certain constraints. Whereas if I use the setter, I always have to use uh, we haven't used the setter yet. But if I use the setter, we always have to go through this. So for example, I could do stuff like if value. Uh, actually, we don't need those brackets here if 
um, value is larger than zero, then we can set it otherwise do something else and so on. Now we have a very simple setter here, but we can make it more complex if we want to. So we don't have even though this is a public setter, we don't have direct access to the variable. Now in this case, we do have sort of direct access because we're not doing anything else, but just assigning the value, but we can do whatever we want in that in that uh, setter function here, which is important for object oriented programming, because what we have is uh, oftentimes we have preconditions and post conditions. And there is the system of a client and a server. So we have the class which, uh, which has to to make sure that certain conditions are met. So for example, I don't know, uh, we can have the, the condition that whenever I set the value age, it cannot be negative or something like that. Um, and certain history constraints like the age can only increase, we cannot decrease the age and so on. Uh, this is more into object, uh, object oriented programming. But the basic idea is that we don't want to have direct access, direct writing access to the to the variable. And this is why we can use those setters, we can also check what happens if I say p1 name equals, we're now going to change it to Bob. And then we're going to print it again. Uh, and you can see we got Mike Bob. So I can definitely go ahead and change this to Bob. And we can also uh, just for the for demonstrational purposes here, we can say if the value for some reason, if the name is Bob, we're not going to allow that. So we're going to uh, I'm not even sure how we do that either we return something or we can just make a simple thing. We're just going to say self dot underscore underscore name is a default name default name because we don't want to accept Bob if someone uh, puts in the value Bob, we're going to say this is a default name. And otherwise, we're going to set this value to whatever the value was like that. Um, so in this case, we're trying to set it to Bob and it should get the value default name, we're going to see if that's true. As you can see, it's true because we have the control in the class, we can define, okay, if you go through the setter, you have to fulfill certain constraints. And if you enter Bob, for example, the post condition is going to be that the name will end up being the default name, for example, this is just a very, very trivial and not very useful uh, decision here. But this is ex essentially what we're doing here with the setter, we have control over our class. So I want to talk about two more annotations here. And the first one we're going to talk about is called static method. And as the name already suggests, we use it to define static methods. Now, I don't think that it's mandatory, I think you can define static methods without putting at static method above it, but it's best practice. And I think it will have some functionality, I'm not sure. Uh, but of course, you should be doing it if you're programming in an object oriented context, at least for the hinting that this is a static method. And we can say something like def my method, for example, and obviously, we're not going to pass a self keyword here. Because remember, a class is just a blueprint for an object and the object is then the concrete actual object, which has the values name, gender, age, and so on, with concrete values, and it also has all of the functionality. Um, and whenever we want to have a function do something and uh, work with the properties work with the attributes, we need to refer to the object itself so that an object has to know itself and has to be able to access its own attributes. And because of that, we need the self keyword. Uh, and since a static method is not um, related to a specific object, it's a method that works without any objects uh, in the class directly, we don't need to pass a self uh, keyword here. So we can actually pass nothing if we want to. And then we can just say something like print hello world here, just a basic hello world program. And now we can go ahead and instead of saying something like p1 new person and so on, we can say person directly from the class my methods. So we don't need an object here to call this function, we can immediately call this function from the class or directly from the class. So let's say Python three main py and you can see we get hello world here, even though we didn't have any objects initialized at this point. Now we can of course also call it from the object, but it's not related to a specific object. So I can do something like p1 dot um, p1 dot my method, we can call it and we get the same result. And if I rerun this, you can see two times hello world here. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.